It's like something out of an action movie. A shadowy group with global reach and powerful supporters has shocked the world amid brutal Gaza war. Let's talk about Hezbollah. It's the Lebanese group that is back in the headlines. It's a bad situation where we're getting used to the noise and to the, to, to the sounds and to the sirens. But it's, it's, our, it's, our, uh, it's our reality for five months. Some countries classify Hezbollah as a terror group, but it is also deeply embedded in Lebanon's politics and society. More powerful than the Lebanese army, Hezbollah is very close to Iran. So how did Hezbollah come into the Israel-Hamas war scene? Why is Israel an enemy and Hamas an ally to Hezbollah? And how powerful is the group today? Let's draw the curtain on the world's most powerful militant group. Israeli intelligence sources report that Hezbollah is conducting live fire tests on Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. These tests aim to locate Iron Dome batteries and saturate the system with missiles to overwhelm its defenses and identify its weaknesses. Hezbollah is launching frequent barrages of low-cost missiles, as seen by a recent attack involving 30 missiles. Israel's Iron Dome reportedly intercepted 12 with the remainder falling in unpopulated areas. Hezbollah aims to bypass the Israeli Air Force's detection systems and increase the number of missiles hitting targets and circumventing the Iron Dome. They achieve this by targeting Iron Dome locations and launching more missiles simultaneously. Similar tactics are employed with drones. Hezbollah has launched unmanned aerial vehicles from various locations and altitudes, probing for weaknesses in Israel's defenses. To counter these efforts, the Israeli military is reportedly deploying helicopters and fighter jets equipped with countermeasure radars, focusing on areas challenging for other interception systems. After a string of losses suffered by Hezbollah since the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza began on October 7, analysts are increasingly asking whether the iron-backed group has been politically and militarily weakened by the contained conflict in southern Lebanon. Despite talk of a potential ceasefire in Gaza, there is no guarantee that Israel and Hezbollah will halt their deadly exchanges along Lebanon's southern border. Nor would it put a stop to the suspected targeted killings of militia leaders deep inside Lebanese territory. For Lebanon, even this relatively contained tit-for-tat between Israel and Hezbollah has been costly. Civilians living along the border have been killed while thousands have fled north over fears of an Israeli invasion. On March 3, U.S. envoy Amos Hochstein landed in Beirut in a bid by Washington to reduce regional tensions. His visit coincided with an attack on northern Israel, launched from Lebanon, that left an Indian worker dead and seven others wounded. Hezbollah, backed by Iran, is considered one of the most powerful and heavily armed non-state groups in the world. Given how tensions in the region are already at a boiling point, all it would take is one ill-placed or ill-timed spark to alight a major new front. U.S. officials now assess that the risk is rising that Hezbollah could begin targeting U.S. troops or diplomatic personnel in the Middle East, or even plan attacks in the U.S. homeland. From the first days of the Israel-Hamas war, the question that scares everybody is would Hezbollah join Hamas war effort by launching a full-scale assault on Israel from Lebanon? The possibility of a new front in Lebanon brings back bitter memories of a vicious month-long 2006 Hezbollah-Israel war, and right now, any miscalculation could send a wrong signal leading to an all-out war. Hezbollah's military capabilities, with an estimated 100,000 to 150,000 missiles and rockets aimed at Israel, and tens of thousands of fighters in its ranks, far outstrip those of Hamas. Experts warn that an Israel-Hezbollah war could be far deadlier and more drawn out than Israel's operations against Hamas in Gaza, 
and a failure to contain Israel-Hezbollah tensions could be much deadlier for Middle Eastern nations.